Hello everyone, welcome back as we continue our series on probability. Today we are looking at the probability of multiple events, the probability of multiple events, and this idea is going to build very heavily on the previous two videos where we talked about the multiplication counting principle and we talked about counting trees. So if you're not real comfortable with those two topics yet, you're probably going to want to go back and watch those two previous videos before entering into this one. For example, you will notice that in the last two videos we have dealt with this problem right here where you have a penguin apparently who is trying to build a skateboard out of um, a set of deck options and a set of wheel options. And in our first video, we talked about the fact that that can be uh, graphed out or diagrammed out as a counting tree, like you see here. And then we took that information, we said, you know, if there are five decks and three sets of wheels, that means we have 15 different outcomes. In other words, we said that if you take the number of choices for option one, and multiply it by the number of choices for decision two, you will end up with the total number of possible combinations. We're going to build off that idea today, and I want you to think about this. Suppose I wanted to know what the probability of choosing an alien deck from our list of deck choices would be. Well, as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five different decks from which we can choose. Um, each of them might be equally likely, and so we're going to assume they are. So if we were to write each name onto a piece of paper, put it into a hat, reach into the hat and draw it out, what is the probability out of those equally likely events that we will pull out the piece of paper that says the word alien on it? Well, hopefully you realize that there's one paper with alien written on it out of five total possibilities, so you get a probability of one-fifth. I want you to think about the probability of pulling cloud wheels out of a hat. Cloud wheels. We have three different equally likely choices of wheel sets. We write them on a piece of paper, we put the piece of paper in a hat, we reach in and draw one out. Only one of them has cloud written on it out of the three possible choices. So we get a probability of one third for drawing cloud wheels. Let's take this one step further. Suppose I were to ask you the probability of choosing an alien deck and cloud wheels. In other words, if I were to list all of these out in a counting tree as we have done in both the previous videos, and we were to look at all the possible different options or combinations of skateboard that we could come up with, and we were to look for those that have alien decks and cloud wheels. Well, you can see in all my list of choices, there's only one combination that has both of those things appearing together. We've already said there are 15 combinations altogether, which means the odds of choosing alien cloud out of all our possible outcomes is 1 in 15. I want you to take a second look at these three fractions or these three probabilities for just a moment. Hopefully you see something there. If you don't, you might want to pause the video and think about it for just a second. I'm going to assume that if you're planning on doing that, you already have. Hopefully you realize that 1 15th is the product of 1 5th and 1 3rd. 1 5th times 1 3rd equals 1 15th. Remember when you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators together, 1 times 1 is 1. Then you multiply the denominators together, 5 times 3 is 15. So the odds of this combination occurring is 1 in 15. Now, this leads us to our rule for finding the probability of multiple events. The probability of multiple events occurring at the same time or simultaneously is the product of their individual probabilities. So we're going to take the probability of the first event, multiply it by the probability of the second event, and it's going to give us the probability that both will occur. Here's another example that we used in the previous two videos. We said that um, if we roll a six-sided die, there are six possible outcomes. If we were to draw a card out of this deck of cards, there are six possible outcomes. And then we said that if we were to look at how many different possibilities could occur for both of those, this area diagram showed us that there were 36 different possible combinations. So, what if I said to you, what is the probability of rolling an even
even number on a six-sided number cube? Well, the probability of an even number, I come down here and I look at my cube and I say, which of these are even numbers? That's a two, a four, and a six. Out of the six sides of a die, three of them are even, so you have a probability of three sixths. It says, what's the probability of rolling an even number on a six-sided number cube and drawing the queen of clubs? So I look over here at my deck of cards and I say, what is the probability of drawing the queen of clubs? Well, there's only one queen of clubs out of the six options that are available to me. Assuming they're all equally likely, you get a probability of one out of six. You can see I have that choice circled here. So then, if I wanted to know the probability of both of those things occurring, um, of rolling the die and getting an even number, and then reaching into the hand of cards and drawing out the queen of clubs, I could look over here at all these different possibilities and look for anywhere I have an even number matched to the queen of clubs. Well, there's a two, that's even, and a queen. A four, that's even and a queen. A six, that's even and a queen. So three of my 36 choices are even numbers matched to the queen of clubs. Notice once again, three sixths, one sixth, three thirty-sixths. Did the pattern hold? Well, sure. Three six times one six equals three thirty-sixths. Three times one is three. Six times six is thirty-six. Now, if you were in my class, I would not accept this as a final answer. I would require my students to put that fraction in simplest form, so it would equal 1 out of 12, or 1 12th. I might also ask my students to put that into a decimal or a percent, but we're not going to mess with that here today. A few of you probably noticed uh, something else that I could have done in this problem, and you're probably asking yourself this question. 3 sixths is not in simplest form. Instead of writing 3 sixths, could I have just written that as 1 half? Because 3 sixths and 1 half are equivalent fractions. Absolutely you could, because if you did 1 half times 1 sixth and you multiply those together, you would get 1 twelfth. What you've done is you've simplified at the beginning of the problem instead of waiting and having to simplify at the end. Either way, it does not change your final solution. Again, the probability of multiple events occurring simultaneously is the product of the individual probabilities. This is a third problem. This is the third time we've had this problem occur. We've got a spinner with three sections, a spinner with four sections, all those sections are equally likely to occur, and you can see from the tree diagram that I've listed out all the possible outcomes. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 possible outcomes. The question asks, what is the probability of spinning a red on both spinners? It says at the right, but it's actually spinners below. So I moved them after the previous slide and I forgot to make that change. I'll take care of that after the video is done. So, I want to look at the probability of spinning a red on the first spinner. Well, there's only one red. It's right there. And it's one out of the three possible sections. The probability of red on the second spinner? Well, you only have one out of the four possible sections. That's one-fourth. The probability of getting a red and a red. I can look down here at my counting tree at all the possible combinations. Notice there's only one red red, so it's 1 out of 12. Again, when I multiply each of them together, I get the probability of both of them occurring. The probability of multiple events occurring simultaneously is the product of their individual probabilities. Let's put this to work now. We've got three examples where it worked. Here, we're not going to go to the trouble of drawing out counting trees or area models. Instead, we're just going to take this same example that we worked with in the past. It says, when you rent ski equipment at Bridger Peaks Ski Resort, you choose from four different types of ski boots, five lengths of skis, and two types of poles. Notice, down here, I have the answer we came up with in the previous video, four boots, uh, five ski links, and two types of pole gives us 40 different possible outfits, but notice what the question says. What is the probability of choosing a specific pair of boots 
and skis if they are selected at random. The probability of choosing a specific pair of boots and skis if they are selected at random. Well, what's the probability of picking any of these, uh, any specific type of boot? Any of these would have the same probability. If there are four of them, the probability of any one would be one fourth. If I look over here at the ski link, there are five of them. The probability of picking any one, if they're equally likely to be chosen, is one-fifth. And notice the question doesn't ask me anything about a particular set of poles. So whatever set of poles I choose are fine. It's a hundred percent or one out of one. If you would have preferred to write that as two out of two, you're certainly welcome to do that. But the problem really doesn't have anything to do with the poles. So the probability then of any particular type of boot and ski link coming up together is one out of 20. One last problem for you. This is one you've seen before as well. The bicycle lock at the left, it's now below, is a pretty effective deterrent to anyone hoping to jack your ride. There are four dials, each containing the numbers zero through nine. Now that's 10 different things, one through nine and zero. To open the lock, you must make four correct decisions, each of the four numbers on the lock. What is the probability if the lock is set to a random combination that the first two digits will be divisible by three and the last two digits will be even? Remember, there are four decisions being made here. The first spinner or dial, the second spinner or dial, the third spinner or dial, and the fourth spinner or dial. We're gonna look at these four individually it says, what is the probability that if it is set randomly that the first two digits will be divisible by three? Well, let's do that one at a time. If I have the digits zero through nine, zero through nine, which of those digits can be divisible by three? Well, the three, the six, and the nine. The three, the six, and the nine. That's three out of the 10 possibilities. There, of course, is the 10,000 total possible combinations. Three out of 10 is how many it would be divisible by three. I go to the second dial, it has the exact same digits, so it's also going to be three out of 10. Notice what the question says. We wanna know when will the last two digits be even? What are the even numbers on that third dial? Well, it's zero, two, four, six, and eight, that's five out of the 10, or one half. And on the last dial, it's the same thing. The probability of having uh, two digits divisible by three, followed by two digits that are even is nine out of 400. 9 out of 400. Now, this is a simplified fraction. If I had left this 3 out of 10, 3 out of 10, 5 out of 10, 5 out of 10, the denominator would have been 10,000, and I believe the top would have been 225. 225 out of 1,000 is going to give you 9 over 400. Hopefully that's been extremely helpful to you. Hopefully that all makes sense. If not, make sure you go back and watch it again. It should all fit together, I think. I'm going to head out and make those corrections on those typos and get started on coming up with some practice problems for my students. So um, let me know if this has been useful to you. Make sure you leave us a like, leave us a comment in the comment section if that option is still available to you. And then make sure you turn on that notification by ringing the bell so you can catch all the new stuff that we're putting out on probability. Hope this has been good. You guys take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.